Hello everyone, so I figured I'd give you a bit of an update on the PSP consoleizer project. Um, it's been a while since I've posted anything, so I figured I'd show you what's going on and kind of what it can do. So this is it in all of its glory so far. As you can see, this version, I've had to hack a few bits in because I didn't do a very good job of laying out the board. So there's another revision, but I have to wait till payday before I do that. But uh, yeah, it works. So I figured we'd talk about some of the functionality. So one of the main things is, obviously you can use Bluetooth controllers. So one of the cool features is button mappings. So we can map the controller's buttons to the PSP's buttons. We can map the controller's buttons to the PSP's analog stick. And we can map the controller's analog stick, either of them, to the PSP's analog stick. Um, we can also map the controller's analog stick to the PSP buttons. So there's quite a lot of configurability there which is pretty good for like um, first person shooters where you might want the left analog stick to the PSP's analog stick and the right analog stick to the PSP's face buttons. It also allows you to have like L2 and R2 hooked up because they're left and right on the PSP's analog stick if you're playing uh, PS1 games. So let's turn this on. It will now try to connect, there we go. So what's happening now is the, PS the Arduino is now trying to turn on the PSP. Um, and you get that flashing indicator because there's a bit of a process it has to go through. Um, you turn the PSP on, then you have to wait like five seconds before you can push the screen button, and then you have to wait another six seconds, I believe, of holding the screen button down before the PSP will actually output to the TV. So I can see now the LED is solid, so it thinks the PSP is turned on and usable. So to actually play around with the mappings, controllers that have an LED, it will change colour to indicate the mapping that's in use. So in this case, blue is sort of the default mapping. So if we push down the right analog stick, that puts it into sort of config mode, and you can use the D-pad to change some of the configurabilities. So if we hold that down, so now it's in sort of first person shooter mappings. Push it again, it's in PS1 mappings. So the L2 and R2 will control left and right on the PSP's analog stick. And if we go again, We've gone back to the PSP's uh, default configuration. Some of the other config we've got is we can change the brightness of this LED because if you're in a dark room, it kind of lights up the whole room. So we've got a few different settings we can go through and you can turn it off completely. If you turn it off and you change mapping, it will turn back on for three seconds um, and then turn itself back off again. I think it's three, yeah. Um, uh, or you can just turn it back on again. So that's quite cool. One of the other features is if you turn off the controller, so you have to wait a ridiculous amount of time with PS4 controllers, but when it eventually turns off, it will turn off the PSP. Um, and But the Arduino is still on now and waiting for controller connections. So if you reconnect the controller, it remembered the mapping, the controller mapping it was on and it's now turning on the PSP again. Because the PSP has been in standby mode now, rather than a fresh boot, you don't have to wait as long, see how that stops flashing much quicker. So it, it takes advantage of the PSP's uh, standby mode. So if I actually take a closer look at how it hooks up to the PSP. So this is a 2000 model PSP. Um, as you can see, the, the TV outboard down here is like a separate door to board rather than the 3000 model where it's all integrated into the motherboard. So it all uses these FFC cables, except the analog stick. On this version, the analog stick is a weird sort of, it just presses on top of the, the, the motherboard. Um, so you, we have to solder, sadly, um, which is what this is all about. Um, I'm hoping to support the PSP 3000 model because then it's FFCs for everything, which means you don't need to solder anything to the PSP itself. So it's completely reversible. Um, but that's uh, another goal further down the line. Um, some of the other goals is to have the Arduino actually communicate with the PSP via serial. So in the olden days, when the PSP first came out, you had the headphone cable and you could push the buttons to change the tracks of music and stuff. That talked to the PSP via a serial port. So it's possible to have the Arduino and the PSP communicate with each other over serial. So I've got a dev environment set up where I can compile sort of demo programs and actually run them on the PSP. 
So I'm hoping once this is also finished to um, to go down the avenue of writing a custom bit of homebrew on the PSP that can communicate with the Arduino. And then you could create those mappings yourself in real time, just looking at the screen, which would be pretty awesome. And to extend upon that, if that works, is have the PSP tell the Arduino which game you're playing when you're playing it so that it could then automatically select a mapping that you've configured per game, which would be pretty awesome. Um, some of the other features is um, HDMI adapters. So I think it's Hyperkin that do one where it, it's well HDMI adapter, but they have a zoom feature because PSP games are windowed. So you take this little switch on the adapter and it makes it full screen and boom, off you go. The Arduino could control that switch so I could have another mapping, you know, you push the left stick and maybe one of the other buttons to zoom in and out automatically. Now, if I can get the communication between the PSP and the Arduino via serial working, the PSP can say I'm playing a PSP game and the Arduino could automatically zoom in that HDMI adapter, um, which would be pretty awesome if that could work. All right, so I've just got it hooked up to the telly here to sort of show you actually working. So if we turn the controller on, it is now going to turn on the PSP. So this is from a cold boot, so you're going to have the full, like, 30 second wait or whatever it is. So you can hear the audio, but it's the PSP is still not ready for us to trigger the TV out yet. So that's what's going on now. Ah, here we go. So here we are, so it's on the telly. So if we are on the default PSP mapping, so we can use that to go through the options. So if I set that to the PS1 mapping, so now we can use the D-pad to move stuff, but we can also use the left analog stick and that's been mapped to the D-pad. So that's showing the mappings and stuff, which is quite cool. So yeah, that's it really. Some neat stuff in the works. Um, got a 3D printed mount that I'm waiting to arrive in the post to hopefully have all this mounted up properly. Um, and then just wait for this new bloody PCB and write some documentation. And then move on to the, the other bits of the project I mentioned, but the code is pretty much working, it, it's, it works. Um, so yeah, thanks.